And let me see, is this going to work? Wow, yeah, I can actually eat autographs on Roblox now. Well, anyway, so hi guys. What you are seeing right here is basically a resource that's made by Xander22, which is basically this dynamic grass that reacts to players' movement and collision, which I'm going to be overviewing in this video. So yeah, as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and let's just get to it. So the thing that you just saw is called a skinned grass, and the download link is going to be down in the description, and I'm going to be overviewing this dev forum post later, but anyway. If you are right here, you basically just press on the download, and you are going to have the model right here. And from this one, you just want to press on this button that's going to say get model, but I already own this in my inventory. And then once you are back in studio, you just want to go to the toolbox and the inventory, and then my models tab, from where you should have the skin grass right here. And I can simply just left click on it to insert it into the workspace, and yeah, here it is. Now, if I were to do a playtest, you are basically going to see the same thing that you saw at the beginning. So I'm basically just going to go over the model and then this script from right here. So you have these two different patches of grass. One is the studio one, which has the models folder with the model and the runtime. And the runtime basically just requires the script and creates a new grass object. Then it's adding all of the models and the meshes and just to make it a little bit more clear, it listens to the models added at the runtime. Then it basically just updates the whole grass collision and so on in this run service function right here, but I'm going to give more information on it in the dev forum post. And this model right here, right? If I were to expand it, you can see that it's going to have a mesh and basically a lot of these bones. It's like 100 different bones and every single one of them is actually just representing a patch of grass. And right off the bat, first thing that I'm going to say, since the model basically just has a lot of these bones right here, I wouldn't recommend using this on a larger scale. Since right now, if I'm not walking over the grass, right, you can see that both of these scripts are, are like at no activity. But if I just keep walking over here, you can see that suddenly it's jumping to like 11, 12, which for some devices can be, well, a lot. And if you were to like add a whole bunch of these patches on like a whole field or whatever, which I'm actually going to present by duplicating this model and then making the field that I was talking about. Now, if I were to do a playtest on this, I can already feel my frames drop because it's at 15% activity. And if I keep walking over here, it's going to go to like 30. And the rate is normally at like 160 too, so if I go over, it's losing around like 30 frames. So again, this is fine if you have like singular smaller patches, right? If, for example, if you just want to have like a smaller area with the grass that's moving, it's going to be fine, but a whole field like this is basically just going to crash a mobile player's phone. But yeah, did I also mention that there are optimization settings? As you can see, here is some grass basically like disappearing whenever it's out of the render distance. And this is actually done on purpose, where if I were to actually overview the script right now, by going to the skin grass module, which again is made by Xander22, with a YouTube channel and a Twitter link as well. But basically, I'm going to have the default setting table right here, with all of the stuff like the render distance and render in and out twins, with the other important stuff like the collision and win settings, where everything is basically also explained. But let's say I wanted to modify the angle at which the grass is going to like bend on collision from 90 to being like 65. And let me actually just reset the playtest, where and now it's basically going to go like this. So you can see that it's not flopping to fully 90 degrees. And from the collision I can of course change this to be like something weird like 20, where now it's going to register like 20 degrees around my character. But this is actually behaving a little bit weird since you can see that the grass is trying to go in like a few different directions. But another thing that you can see is also going to be the strength multiplier. Where the grass that's a bit closer to my character is actually going to bend more than the grass that's actually further away. So yeah. Now to really quickly overview the different methods, the new creates a new skin grass object, and then the update setting can change the settings and runtime, where the settings table argument should have the same format as the default setting, where if you for example wanted to change the collisions enabled, the argument that you would pass to this function would basically look like this with the collisions enabled of course being a boolean. Then the add mesh method adds the mesh to the grass object and then the step, this is the main function which actually draws calculates all of the collision and updates the grass movement, where it's actually written that this is the main logic of the module. And here 
here you have the target position, collisions, the indexes and the custom settings basically explained about the function. And you can see that there is a lot of calculations that are going on and the code might not be as easy to like read but hey at least it's something. So yeah again if you wanted to like use this module for your own grass again you need to make sure that this is a model holding a mesh which basically is going to have these bones that are basically just going to have these weighted patches of grass. It doesn't need to be like 100 bones, it can be a simple small patch of grass, since again I don't recommend using this for larger scales. But yeah, I think I overdued everything from like the basic runtime to like the showcase of the module and what these different settings and functions are. So now I'm going to go over the dev forum post and give a little bit more information. And here is the dev forum post about the skin grass performant interactive foliage. Again made by Xander22, so shout out to him. But anyway, here he's saying that he was messing around with a more performant approach to interactive foliage using skin meshes. And of course here is the download link which is also going to be down in the description. And apart from what I've shown already, right, here you have all of the features being explained, like the mesh deformation around objects, global and custom wind, the use of octrees and frame limit levels of detail for performance, as well as a lot of customization options for different effects. And a little bit more of the examples, and since this one is the default file that I already went over, I'm actually going to show this one right here. So this time you have the grass boot with a little bit more wind and on a bigger patch. And then this one with different settings. Then you have video previews from Xander's channel which I'm actually going to go to. Again I just want to give a shout out so go subscribe to him. But anyway here is the video preview from his channel where you can actually see that the grass is going to work on a mesh. And maybe I should up the quality. But yeah, then there is this a bit older video from I believe a few months ago where it's basically the same thing. And an effect like this is pretty cool. Then an explanation on how it works with performance, saying that the module calculates collision with an array of vector 3D position, or other positions and radiuses, and uses outreach to find nearby bones and apply displacement. It's a pretty simple effect, the main performance increase over the modules come from using the skin meshes and bone transformation, instead of deep bulk move to method, and it's about 3 to 4 times faster. And then reparenting a skin mesh with x amount of bones is also more performant, and then reparenting a set amount of parts, and it helps move moving the grass in and out of the workspace when out of range. And here is some data on the performance test with bulk move transform and parenting when the bulk move tool was giving a almost 3.5 millisecond time when the transform was barely a millisecond. And with the parenting you can basically see a huge improvement right here. Then here are some links to the other performance on the transform and the downsides of the skin grass. Where the biggest one is going to be basically having to rig the meshes outside of Roblox Studio. So if a 3D modeling software like Blender or 3ds Max because Roblox Studio just doesn't have rigging capabilities. And the static mesh parts are slightly more performant than static skinned meshes. And of course shadows are also more expensive on skinned meshes. And lastly for this paragraph, this module is more of an experiment effect on a and a large amount of grass will likely still be too resource intensive for most devices, so feel free to modify it and use it to your own projects. And if you make anything you can of course post it under the dev forum post. And of course here is a link to Xander's channel which, again I'm going to leave down in the description. But then we go to the basic usage, where here is the initialization, where you basically just require the module and initialize a new object, then have a table of meshes and use the add meshes method, and then just running the effect which is simply done by run service and render step, and then it calculates the collision of the character's primary part, which is going to be the humanoid root part, and then it updates the grass every frame. And you can also change the settings on runtime by using the update setting method with the setting and then the value. And something that I shown already here is the full list of settings and that about it is going to be for the dev forum post. So yeah that's basically going to be everything for today. So again leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also check out my Patreon page. Thank you guys for watching, hope you had a nice day and see you guys.